welcome to celebrate Christ with us on first Sunday of Easter. This holy mass we offer for the repose of the soul of John the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us pause a moment to acknowledge our saints and our witnesses, so we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have made known to us the path of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you suffer for us at the spotless, unblemished land. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you fill us with joy in your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May your people exalt forever, O oh God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection, 
Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried and his tomb is in our midst today. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witness. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your future or your futile conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to them, 
Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? The beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures as they approached the village to which they were going. He gave the impression that he was going on further, but they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning with us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel, we heard that two men are taking a long walk of shock, disappointment, and grief. They were disciples of Jesus. They had witnessed his deeds. Perhaps they were present when he raised up from the dead the son of the widow of Naim, or a little girl named Tabitha or Lazarus. Perhaps they saw some of his healings, or even the world present when he multiplied the bread and fish for thousands. They were sure that Jesus was the Messiah. But everything fell into pieces. Jesus was arrested, scourged, and crucified. The disciples were certain that this could not happen to the Messiah. They were in shock, disappointment, and grief. Many of us have been on that road of grief, and I believe there are many of us on that road of grief right now because of shelter in place, out of job, isolated with our loved ones who has coronavirus, or our loved ones passed away could have had a funeral mass in church and so on and so forth. When tragedy strikes, it is quite normal for us to ask many questions. The main questions we ask are, why? Why did this happen? Where were you, God? When the disciples on that road asked the why question, they were taught that the answer to their questions would be found in the scriptures. They also recognized the presence of God in the breaking of the bread. The story of two men who walked with Jesus from Jerusalem to their home in Emmaus encouraged us during times of fear and disappointment. God wants us to know that through good times and bad, He never leaves us even if we have given up on Him. We all have times when our faith is tested, when we feel as if He has abandoned us. During those times, we forget He has already won victory over our ultimate enemy, sin and death. It is that victory we celebrate each time we are at Mass. Every time we hear those words of Jesus, take this and eat it. This is my body. 
especially we celebrate this victory during the Easter season. Before he ascended into heaven, he says to his disciples, I am with you always to the end of time. His presence with us takes many forms, forms that we often do not recognize. He comes to us in the poor, he comes to us in the frame, he comes to us sometimes in suffering, he comes to us in nature, he comes to us in visible and invisible ways, he comes to us in the church, in the scriptures, he comes in sacrament, and most profoundly, he comes to us in the Eucharist. Whether we feel it or not doesn't matter. He is present. I am with you always. Brothers and sisters, the story of two men who walk with Jesus is our story. He is walking with us. He is trying to help us understand. He is feeding us not just bread for the body, but food for our mind and heart. All we have to do is to tell everyone all about what we experience on our journey. Amen. Now let us stand and renew our baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in the newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. So I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I, I do. do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I, I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. I do, do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestow on us forgiveness of our sins, give us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. God come to us in word of sacraments and strengthen us on our pilgrim way, challenge to live with a renewed hope we pray. May our church be always open to the scriptures and breaking of the bread in places where the Lord is rejected. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer, that today's gospel story will inspire us to become Christ for one another. As we walk together the road to new life, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are on the front lines of this pandemic, as 
especially our health care workers and first responders. For all who are unable to stay at home but must work to provide for their families, may God continue to protect them and keep them in good health. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our sick, may the risen Christ visit them with healing power and new hope. For all who have died, especially John Wong, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may live forever with Christ in the glory of the resurrection, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. You summon us to follow your Son, O oh God of goodness and peace. Hear our prayers as we seek God's presence in those who suffer. Ease their pain and strengthen them. We ask this in Jesus' name, the risen one who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gift we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. In a similar way, when several worlds ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of Your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those who are pleased to renew their eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And before I give a final blessing, I thank you for uh, those who participation in the wonderful liturgy, and for those who helped me to uh, for the set up and uh, music, I think Mindy and music, um, Mary Ellen and we have the Dave and Kathleen and we have the technics, technics and the team that you know recorded for us and uh, I think it's looking good so I hope we're going to see you next Sunday 
and stayed, you know, safe and healthy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.